Hello and welcome back to The Stronghold. I'm the Magi and you know what time it is and we're gonna get our midweek magic on. This week's midweek magic, we are doing it for the Johnnies with a historic popper deck that is bound to drive your opponents a little bit nutty. That's right, it's historic popper and we're bringing you squirrels. But before we get into all that, allow me to do the awkward thing and promote the channel. A while back, one of my viewers was kind enough to point out that we are the only channel putting out timely midweek magic content. So be sure to subscribe right here at the Planeswalker Stronghold for all of your future midweek magic needs because we will be bringing you a deck list or strategy every single week. So what do you say we put all this aside and just get to that? All right, so let's take a look at this deck. Uh, I basically broke it down into four packages, uh, one of which including the land. And uh, I'm gonna kind of start in the middle. Um, this, uh, this third column represents our uh, win condition. And uh, that is four copies of first day of class. That's an instant from, uh, what's that, Strixhaven? Uh, two mana, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and it gains haste until end of turn. It also allows you to learn, which uh, if you weren't around during Strixhaven, uh, learning allows you to reveal a lesson card from outside the game and put it into your hand or discard a card to draw a card. And uh, that is why this best of one deck has a seven card sideboard, because these are all various lessons, uh, which allow you to tutor up a land, uh, create a couple of one one token creatures, draw a couple cards after you scry, uh, make a four four elemental creature token, uh, exile target non land permanent, its controller draws a card or create a 0-0 green-blue fractal creature token, put X plus one plus one counters on it in fractal summoning. So uh, a lot of different things that you can do there. The other side of our wing con, of course, is the namesake of the deck, Chatterstorm, another two mana. This one's a sorcery. Uh, create a 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature token, and it has Storm. And for those that aren't familiar with Storm, when you cast this spell, copy it for each spell cast before it this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies. So the idea is to storm off in one big turn, make a bunch of squirrels that all get plus one, plus one counters, and haste, swing for the win. <clears throat> And it's surprising how often you get to do this, uh, particularly since oftentimes you're chatterstorming for six or seven or something like that. Now, I know what you're thinking, that can be a lot of mana to try and go off with, not to mention you want some other spells in there too. Uh, so the entire rest of the deck is dedicated to trying to set that up. Uh, of course, the mana base is pretty simple, but it can only do so much. We're running nine mountains, nine forests, and uh, three copies of Cabaret Courtyard, which allows you to tutor up the either of the aforementioned forest or mountains. Uh, it is my tutor land for this particular deck of choice because it also allows you to gain one. Uh, but if you don't have three copies and you don't want to spend the wild cards on it, certainly a Terramorphic Expanse or an Evolving Wilds uh, or some mix thereof will get the job done pretty much just as well. Uh, the first grouping of spells here is all just a ramp. Uh, we've got Elvish Mystic and the Land of War Elves in here as one drop, Mana Dorks. Uh, if you don't happen to have those particular cards, they are pretty solid investments. They get played quite a bit. Uh, but really, any one-drop mana dork that you've got will fit the bill. Uh, from there, we've got Explore, a fairly crucial two-mana sorcery. Uh, you may play an additional land this turn, so again, helping you ramp. Uh, and it allows you to draw a card. And of course, it contributes to your storm count. 
Uh, from there, I'm going to skip down to the bottom. We've got uh, three mana, Land of War, Visionary, a 2-2. Two, two. Um, so actually the biggest body really in the deck. Uh, when it ETBs, you get to draw a card, and of course, he's a mana dork. And the MVP of uh, mana ramping is your goblin Anarchomancer, I believe is how you would say that. Uh, the only hybrid spell in the deck, uh, one red, one green. Each spell you cast that's red or green costs one less to cast. So if you think about that in terms of the other spells that we've talked about, that makes your explorer cost one mana, which means it could be mana neutral. Uh, first day of class, one mana. Chatterstorm is now one mana. Great stuff. Um, the second group in here, which is uh, ironically all red cards, is your card draw engines. Uh, Faithless Salvage, a two mana instant, discard a card, then draw a card, and it rebounds. And if you're not familiar with that, it means if you cast this spell from your hand, exile it as it resolves. At the beginning of your next upkeep, you may cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. So for two mana, or one, if you've got your goblin buddy out, uh, you get to cast this spell this turn and next turn, potentially contributing to more of your storm counts. Uh, Galvanic Relay is another storm card in here. This one costs uh, two and a red, and again, of course, that is subject to potential cost reduction. Exile the top card of your library. During your next turn, you may play that card. Uh, and again, it storms off. So what this does is loads up a pseudo hand of cards for your next turn so that you can then storm off casting those spells. Uh, from there, we've got the three mana Seize the Spoils and the four mana Big Score. Uh, both allow you to discard a card and then draw two cards. Seize the Spoil creates a treasure token. In addition, Big Score uh, creates two treasure tokens. So uh, this can either contribute to your hand for the following turn, your hand for the current turn, your current turn spell storm count, and treasure resources to help you cast additional spells. So um, it's a pretty straightforward deck, although I will say it does take some practice to get to see the play lines and knowing how and when to go off. If you're Johnny at heart, this deck is awesome. Now, sadly, with this being a popper event in Historic, there's no good way to test this deck beforehand. Uh, really, the best I can do is throw it up against Sparky to kind of show you a proof of concept. Um, and one thing I want to say about this is, while this deck is not a big investment cards-wise, because of course they're all commons, and uh, there's a good chance that you have a few of these already, bringing your cost down even more, um, there is a cost here as far as learning to pilot the deck. So if you are not a Johnny at heart, if that sort of thing does not appeal to you, uh, this might be something that you want to pass by and go with something that's a little bit more of a linear concept. Don't feel bad. There's going to be a link down in the description to take you to a bunch of other options. Um, as for this hand, I like the fact that I've got multiple Galvanic Rays in here. I've got some card draw, I've got a little bit of ramp, I've got my Chatterstorm, so I've kind of got half my combo. What I don't have is any decent land, so uh, I've really got to get this out and see if we can do better. And uh, there we go, a lot better. Um, one of each on our lands, plus a, um, an Archimancer. Uh, we've got some ramp, we've got a relay for draw, we've got our Chatterstorm, so we're pretty much there. Uh, the question here is what to give up, and I think one of our mana dorks, uh, six of one, half dozen of the other. And uh, we'll see if we can play it out here and, and kind of show off what the deck potentially can do. We'll get our elf out there right away. Uh, follow up with another land and our answer. You see that just reduced my cost on Chatterstorm, just like that. Um, but since I don't want a Chatterstorm this turn, I am going to go ahead and poke in for one. Uh, now let's see here. I think we can do this maybe to get our count up for next turn. 
Uh, I don't need that. And uh, we'll discard mm, tough call there. I think we'll go with the other salvaging. Okay, so there's our first A class. So uh, it's it's not awesome, but it's not terrible either. Um, so we will pass her. If I could draw a land and double Galvan and Ray, that would be pretty nice. I would really need that. Yes, we will pass that. Um, we are going to throw back. Oh no, not first A class. One of our Galvan and Rays. Okay, so we got a land, but we did not get a red land. So that's a little disappointing. So I am going to go grab another mountain here. And I think we just got on a race here and draw a couple cards into our pseudo hand. And they're both lands. Well, shit-tastic. Um, let's see here. We will pass because we've kind of got nothing. And this is the other potential issue with combo decks, is sometimes they go off and sometimes they don't. Uh, we're gonna say a big old no block there, very much. Okay, well that's not the worst thing that could be going on here. Um, so we will cast that. Um, we will... Like, Throw a first day of class on to the pile here, and I don't know what. Do, I guess we get uh, environmental sciences. I'm not sure we're really going to cast that, but I suppose in theory we could. Uh, we'll throw another first day of class on there, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll just grab the other environmental sciences. And uh, we will go ahead and shatter storm off here. All these guys can come in against three threes. So it's not quite lethal. It's not the ideal, but uh, we we did get some things done here, and we're going to be able to swing for I believe that's eleven. If uh, that skills are withstanding. So we're looking at a win next turn. And hey, just in case you didn't catch all that, Matt would like you to know that the deck list that we discussed in this video is going to have a link down in the doobly-doo to take you over to Etherhub, uh, along with a link to any other alternative list that you might wish to consider. He only asked that you give it a little like thumbs up when you're over there checking out the deck list. And I plan on live playing this event on Wednesday at 11 a.m. over on my Twitch channel. So definitely stop in and check it out. Because The Stronghold is so much more than just a YouTube channel. And you can find links to all of our other social media outlets in our profile. Because at the end of the day, we're all budget players. And as a community, we're stronger together. So like, comment, subscribe, follow, do all those things to show a little love. It's appreciated more than you know.